I wanted to just take seven, I thought I had eight, but I can carve off one, uh, minutes of your time to talk about five big disruptive technologies in the energy sector. And this is a really, really interesting time for energy. We've had uh, a couple of hundred years, effectively, post-industrial revolution, where you know, we've had a few minor revolutions, the discovery of oil uh, after the coal, uh, miracle, uh, and then not much has really happened, and we're still largely getting our energy from digging up uh, black and brown stuff and burning it. But the wave of innovation coming at this space from a range of different areas is really quite astonishing, and I'm going to quickly take you through five of those dimensions now. So firstly, shale gas, a fossil wave. Secondly, new solar. Thirdly, info technology and demand side response. Fourthly, batteries and storage. And then carbon dioxide removal. Each of these could be game changers in the energy system in their own way. So let's start with the fossil side. By now, you're probably aware that over the last few years, we've had two innovations combined together in the US, horizontal drilling, so instead of drilling straight down, going horizontally, and hydraulic fracturing, so breaking apart rock with uh, fluids under pressure, that has enabled American oil and gas players to extract far more out of shale rock in terms of oil and gas than ever before. This has led to the oil price crashing. It's led to the market cap of coal players in the US being destroyed by plus 80% 80, 80 or more. And it has completely changed the energy space globally. But it's a very short-term change. It's big, but it's short-term. And I'm going to argue now that an even bigger change is what we have ahead on the solar front. Now, we all know that solar has collapsed in price over the last 10 years. This has been a trend that has been very consistent, in fact, over the last 30 years. Year on year, 9% declines in the cost of PV modules. If you compare that over the long run, with the cost of coal, which is just flatlining up and down, cost of nukes, which gradually go up as, as health and safety costs get tougher and tougher. Solar is really remarkable. And it's not long, perhaps mid-2020s, before solar is cheaper than coal in most places most of the time. And it's already cheaper than coal in some places some of the time. This is a very, very disruptive technology and a big game changer. And there's more to come. The chart I just showed you is based on technologies that we already know about. At labs at Oxford, here the Oxford Martin School work on perovskite structures, that's the rock there, capture sun far more efficiently and at much lower cost uh, than the existing solar modules. And those results are now being replicated in Berkeley, in South Korea. And not only are they cheaper and more efficient, they're more flexible. So you can have solar glass, your buildings can become mini power stations. This is not tomorrow, not next year, but it's not far around the corner. Again, a very, very disruptive energy technology. And the reason this is so exciting for me is just how huge it is. You probably know, that, well, maybe you don't, we use about 500 to 1,000 exajoules of energy to power the totality of human civilization every year. It's a very big number. But we have 5.5 million exajoules coming at us from the sun every year. 500 is what we use. 5.5 million is what we have to tap. So we are awash with this stuff. We are awash with energy. We don't have an energy scarcity problem. We have energy abundance. The scarcity has been, so far, the scarcity of human brain power to work out how to capture it and to use it, and we're on the cusp of solving that scarcity problem. And it's very exciting, because small areas like the little red dot here could power the whole of the UK, and the, the yellow square could power the, the entirety of the Middle East and North Africa at European levels of energy consumption. Storage is another game changer. If we get solar right and we get wind right, we will need uh, energy technologies to enable us to store the energy so that we can use it when we want it, not when it's generated. And here, too, there is progress. I suspect many of you will have heard of Tesla, the electric vehicle player. You probably may have heard that Google is now doing driverless electric vehicles, that Apple has had until recently a secret plan to develop cars. These two technologies, vehicles and batteries, are coming together for obvious reasons to see the costs of batteries halving. They're likely to halve again over the coming years. Now, most of our storage now is hydro or compressed air, but this could change as the cost of batteries comes down. And again, this is a space where I constantly see 
very different, very unusual, but also very exciting innovations coming at me that I'd never, never th thought of. Uh, and some of them will take root, many of them won't, but it's an exciting space. Right, uh, two minutes left. So, next one, information technology. We're all awash with big data, it's the big trend. Uh, but in energy, we still haven't seen it hit home quite yet. I mean, certainly I still have to take a train and go to my flat in London to manually read the meter. This is not going to last for much longer with the sorts of technologies that, that Google has launched in, with Nest, and, and there are now technologies so that your swimming pool pump and your air conditioner can talk to your solar panel and make sure that they're working at the same time when the sun is shining. It's not necessarily all high-tech, but it's very big impact. And here's an example of low-tech big impact. Mcopa is a spin-out from M-Pesa, the mobile payments uh, company based in Kenya. They provide people with a kit, a solar panel, a battery, uh, a SIM card, a couple of lights, a radio and a fan for not much more than $20 or $30. Uh, and all of that combined enables people to you know, be far more productive with their lives. They've had 200,000 new customers in the space of just about two years, and they're now going to tackle the 300 million people in India who don't have access to power. Now, you can ask yourself, does it make sense to despoil our natural environments with huge coal mines, then shipping the coal all the way over to India to rely upon grids that don't exist to connect people, or can we just use the markets and innovation and clever ideas to get these people what they need? Last. Carbon dioxide removal, and I say this because of the basic mathematics of climate change. As I go around the world talking, it, I realize that people don't understand necessarily that we need zero emissions to stabilize the temperature at any level, whether it's three degrees or two degrees or two and a half degrees or even you know, eight degrees when we're all wiped out. At some point, we will get to zero emissions. This is inevitable. This is a major, major, major change to the energy system. And the reason we need to get to zero emissions, uh, it's not going to be easy, is because we are awash with fossil fuels. On the bottom line, you can see reserves and resources of oil in green, gas in blue, and coal and ignite reserves in black. You can compare that, so that's the, that's the carbon embodied in those reserves, compared to the carbon that we can afford to put into the atmosphere to keep below two degrees, three degrees at different scientific levels of uncertainty. And I haven't shown you the full picture because I left off the coal and lignite resources. So we have far, far more fossil fuels in the ground than we can ever afford to burn. And we're not going to burn them. And either vast amounts of investment in fossil fuel assets will go wasted, there'll be stranded assets and investors who are losing their shirts, or, and possibly it's both, we will have some set of innovations within technologies to strip carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and bury it. Now, some of these technologies are highly controversial. I'm not necessarily promoting them. I'm just saying that there are substantial innovations going on here, and this could be another game changer. So five game changers in seven minutes. Uh, I think what I want to leave you with is that this is a very disruptive field. Thanks very much.